If you're familiar with this channel, I made several low quality videos on Microsoft PowerPoint 2007 back in the day that for some reason will get hundreds of thousands of views on this channel. A few days ago, I rediscovered these old files with my friends on the Discord call, and needless to say, we broke out laughing at how bad they were. But this got me thinking. Why don't I try to redo this video with what I've learned over the years? A pretty simple rule that I'm going to be putting in place here for the span of this video is that I'll only be putting the basis on these cars, more specifically, the fantasy castings in this toy line, based on cars that existed at the time of their releases. So basically, no Crazy 8s, which released in 2001, being based on an LMP car from the 2020s, or Side Draft being a 2010's supercar, despite being released in 2002. Oh shit. Now that I have the basic rule out of the way, let's kick it off with the first of the 35 cars. You all know it, and you probably love it, the Diora 2. Diora 2, for what it's worth, should be rather obvious. It's based on the original 1966 Dodge Diora concept, which of course became one of the first Hot Wheels blah 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 blah. You probably know that story already. What I want to take a unique twist on this, however, is look at the real Diora 2's basis, which recently did get an Acceleracer's livery. Believe it or not, our beloved Diora 2 started life as a 2002 Cadillac DeVille. Well, the only part left of that original Cadillac is the drivetrain. The rest of the car is built over in fiberglass to make the Diora 2 we all know and love. But that's some fun history, in my opinion. Diora 2 not only being based on a 1960s Dodge concept, but also a shitty North Star V8 Cadillac sedan. Switchback, according to its original designer, Eric Tshern, I probably butchered that name, is heavily inspired by the 1950s Ford F series of trucks, which is blatantly obvious with them sharing a near identical cab shape, and the grille is based off of the one from a 1956 Ford F100. To give it the unique California design, it was lowered, given big wheels and surfboards to quote-unquote complete the look. I think it translates well in the film, but the actual toy looks kind of unfinished or unproportionate. I don't know, just to me, with that really short axle length and the tucked-in tires, it just looks uncanny, if that's the correct way to say it. I don't know, it's always bugged me, even when I was a kid. Backdraft takes heavy inspiration from several European supercars of the 1990s. Several, actually. But if I had to narrow it down to one, I would have to choose the Jaguar XJ220. I mainly chose the XJ due to both sharing the same motor, that being a V12, as well as both cars having similar roof lines, grills, and front ends. The 55 Nomad is the first of the 35 cars to be a full-on production car. So instead, here's some info on the real car. The Chevy Nomad was a station wagon version of the then popular Chevrolet Impala and Bel Air sedans, before it was eventually discontinued in 1972. The motor that the Nomad is mentioned having in the movie from its virtual garage bio shows the motor under the hood of the Nomad to be a 409 V8, which was built for the 1961 Impala specifically. It was also the topic of a classic 1960s Beach Boys song, aptly named 409 under the V8 in question. Pretty neat piece of trivia about Lonnie's 55 Nomad, if you ask me. Wait! Hey! Now the Kurt's out of the race! Power pipes, like Backdraft, has a lot of basis in the supercars of the era. However, in my opinion, Power Pipes' design basis, if any, seems to be inspired by Japanese supercars of the late 1990s. 
The two I want to spotlight in particular being the Nissan R390 and the Yamaha OX99-11 supercar. The Yamaha, I feel, fits more in line with power pipes, as it has a near identical cockpit and overall similar body shapes, notably both having a similarly shaped rear end. However, the R390 is another car people like to point as towards being a design basis for the power pipes due to the R390 having these two little exhaust outlets next to the car's cockpits, similar to power pipes. Both work as a basis in my opinion, but I'm more fond of the Yamaha. Another real car technically, the Chrysler Thunderbolt was a 1993 concept car by the Chrysler Corporation, named after and acting as a spiritual successor to the 1941 concept car of the same name. The 93 Thunderbolt was a design study for Chrysler's new cab forward designs, which would begin to roll out later that same model year with cars such as the 1993 Dodge Intrepid. It's kind of crazy to think how a car like the Thunderbolt would eventually become an underwhelming 90s sedan like the Dodge Intrepid. The Stingray, as it's known in the movie, is in fact a real Corvette Stingray. It's based on the 1959 Corvette Stingray XP87 Racer. Built and raced in 1959 by then Vice President at General Motors, Bill Mitchell, he took the car racing, winning several races with it. This Corvette was actually the first Corvette to don the popular trim name Stingray, a nameplate which is still used on the Corvette to this day, and surprisingly, the XP87 Stingray itself is still around to this day. And that sums up the Wave Rippers. Definitely some interesting history on some of the cars on the team. With this roster, now it's time for... Nobody beats Kurt Wilde! Slingshot in concept is quite simple actually. It's basically taking the question of... What if we spliced a McLaren F1, particularly the 1997 McLaren GT, with an actual F1 car design? One Dragon Ball Z fusion dance later, and here's Slingshot. The McLaren features are rather obvious, with both cars having similar body panels and front fenders, and F1 inspiration coming from the massive air scoop on the car's hood, as well as the center drive, which yes, was on the McLaren F1, but the center drive is more indicative of an F1 car. Side draft, being named after a principle of side draft induction on a race car, it's pretty easy to see the mild inspiration of this V8 racer from LMP cars of the 1960s. If I had to narrow it down to one choice, i definitely go with the Porsche 917K, due to its front two fenders and headlights being positioned nearly identical to side drafts as well as the overall rear body lines and proportions of both cars angling in nearly the same direction. The Pontiac Rages is a 1997 concept car designed by Pontiac. It was designed to be a practical sports car, and this was demonstrated by the suicide doors in the back, designed for ease of access in and out of the back seat with a lifted rear. All things considered, on a technicality, the Pontiac Rages is a crossover. If you couldn't tell by the name, 24-7 is based heavily on an FD Mazda RX-7, specifically the Veilside Fortune Kit, which you may be familiar with if you've seen Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift. What's clever about 24-7 is that it was created because Mattel could not get the Mazda license to get an actual RX-7 in Hot Wheels form. And so, as a result, 24-7 was born. Damn it. 
Road Rocket, as the name suggests, is an overly exaggerated LMP racer, the race car equivalent of a rocket ship. The LMP car I'd say is closest to Road Rocket would be the MG Lola EX257. It has a similar flat aerodynamic deck, the rear wing, and front fenders. The actual car even has a Hot Wheels livery. Heh, <laughs> small world, isn't it? Aeroflash is heavily inspired by the 1970s era of European wedge-shaped sports cars. There are several you could point at as being the exact inspiration for Aeroflash, such as the Mercedes-Benz C111, the Alfa Romeo Carabo, Lancia Stratos Zero, the Ferrari Modulo, and many, many more. However, if I really had to think and choose one, I'd go with the Carabo, simply due to the wedge shape being the closest and most accurate to what Aeroflash looks like. Although, you could really make an argument for any of the wedge supercars I mentioned thus far being the basis for Aeroflash. The IROC Firebird seen in the movie is based on a real 1996 Pontiac Firebird, which was used in the IROC series of oval racing. IROC standing for International Race of Champions, if you didn't know. Although being built in 1996, these cars would last racing on the IROC circuit until its discontinuation in 2006, well after the Firebird was discontinued by GM in 2002. A fun tidbit of information about the Firebird is that the real car's wheels are the wheel which the film uses as five spokes. Talk about art imitating life. The street breed really did have some interesting basis from all across automotive history, which to me was pretty unexpected given that the team is literally named Street Breed. Next up, it's the Road Beasts. This is an all fantasy casting team, so this should get pretty interesting pretty fast. Yes! Better than Kurt Wildstein. Ballistic's personal basis, in my opinion, is a bit of a funny in joke with the car being based on the Road Beasts team. With it having a lot of similarities to the third gen Dodge Viper, both cars having rear mounted driver's compartments and extended front engine bays to house their larger motors, as well as similar fender shapes on the boot. It's kind of clever in my opinion how they made the leader of the animal themed team have a car based loosely on a Viper, which of course is an animal. The pattern of cars, somewhat based on animals, continues with Zotic, which is pretty obviously based on the, at the time, brand new Lamborghini Gallardo, with some inspiration taken from the pre-existing 2002 Lamborghini Murcielago. The name Gallardo is taken from the 18th century Spanish bullfighting breeder named Francisco Gallardo. For some unholy reason, I thought Twin Mill was a 68 Plymouth Cuda? What the fuck? Yeah, I uh, I got nothing to try and explain that. Twin Mill was designed in 1969 and would basically go on to become the poster boy of the Hot Wheels brand for years and years to come. In 2011, it even got a life-sized replica from Mattel. Now, in my opinion, if we're able to get Teku Diora 2 in real life, I'm thinking the sky's the limits. I wouldn't be shocked if we were able to get the Road Beast Twin Mill wrap in real life. But honestly, if I had to pick one concept car of the 1960s for Twin Mill's inspiration, I'd go with the Dodge Charger 3 concept. <laughs> Motocrossed was probably the first car here where I really couldn't find an exact car to reference as a basis. It's obviously a lifted buggy made for off-road racing, but if I had to pick one car for it to look like, I'd go with the 2001 Ford EX. Yeah, uh, see what I mean? There's really no easy set-in-stone basis for this car, so I just pulled that out of my ass. 
As compensation, here's a useless little tidbit of information about motocross. It actually makes a cameo in a Max Steel movie, which was also animated by Mainframe as well, who made Hot Wheels World Race. Vulture is another one like Motocrossed, where I was pretty stumped. However, if I had to take any sort of inspiration, I'd say it's a fusion between a top fuel dragster and an LMP car. Kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel here for ideas. However, the dragster inspiration is pretty much there. As you can see, similar to a dragster, Vulture has a huge motor tucked in the back of it behind the driver's compartment, as well as a huge set of drag slicks right in the back. If you have any better ideas on what any of these cars I've listed thus far and will in the future of this video, feel free to comment below. You would think Power Rocket would be another hard one, but not really actually. In my genuine opinion, Power Rocket, to me, is a modern homage to the classic 1950s concept of rocket power cars. Two you could look at are the Oldsmobile rocket car from 1950 or the 1962 Chrysler Turbine. It's a homage to these rocket cars mixed with the elements of a modern rocket ship itself or a LMP car. Pretty clever design they have going on there. Definitely a casting I've always been a fan of. Rounding out the row beasts is Power Pistons, which is heavily based on Group C cars of the 1990s. If I had to choose one specifically, it would have to be the Porsche 962C. I just think the body proportions and styling line up the closest between the real car and what you see on screen in the movie. And we're finally done with the row beasts. That was a bit of an animal to research. Yeah, I'm not funny. I know. Just roll the tape and move on to the Dune Rats. So much for me saying the next one wouldn't be a hard one to connect a basis to. Similarly to Power Pistons, Crazy 8s is more of an extreme take on a Hot Wheels edition of a Group C race car. If I had to choose one car that looks like Crazy 8s, I'd say it'd be the Peugeot 905 Evo 2. Sure, it does have a rear wheel cover, but I just think for as exotic and crazy as a design that Crazy 8's is, and with what cars were out at the time of Crazy 8's designing, I think this is probably just going to be the best you're going to get. Ah, wild thing, wild thing, wild thing. Wild thing. Soup! The car everyone seems to dunk on as being the worst one, or the stupid car, or the one with no wheels, etc, etc. You've heard all the slander for this car. However, I think Wild Thing is pretty clever. Literally look at the name of the team. Dune Rats. Wild Thing is based on the typical salt flat racers you would see at the Bonneville Salt Flats in Utah. The Bonneville Salt Flats, if you didn't know, is basically a long extended strip of desert which is completely flat and it attracts a lot of speed demons. The design was never meant for production and only as a design challenge for Toyota's designers. Here, yeah, Wild Thing makes a bit more sense now, doesn't it? Hashtag justice for wild thing. Let's get it trending on r slash accelerators. Or don't. The Toyota RSC was a concept car based on the Toyota RAV4 of the time. It was built and designed off of current WRC design cues of the era Toyota was making, and was built to appeal to younger buyers. The design was never meant for production and only as a design challenge for Toyota's designers. Did you make it, Juvo? Guess not. 
The Ford F-150 in the movie is depicted as a 1997 Ford F-150, which is the 10th generation of the ever-popular Ford F-Series truck. The motor seen in the car in the movie is a Triton V10, which was available in the higher-end Ford F-150 known as the Ford Super Duty. Okay, but off-topic tangent real quick, I feel so bad for Chuvo in this movie. Everyone else in the world race got these cool-ass exotic race cars or exotic muscle cars, sports cars, and Bro just got a 1997 Ford F-150. If I was him, I would have been pissed. Okay, tangent over. Next car. Look. Out of all 35 cars, this one was by far the hardest. I found nothing on Sweet 16-2. I did well over an hour's worth of research, and the only car I could really see that Sweet 16-2 looks like is Jay Leno's tank car. Which, this isn't necessarily a production or concept car, and it was built after the car's release date, so technically I'm cheating, but I really don't care. This is the only thing I could really find. Please, if you have any suggestions on what else this car could be, comment down below, because I have nothing. The 1969 El Camino is part of the third generation of the Chevrolet El Camino, GM's car-truck hybrid with a massive wing and Chevrolet big block V8 motor stuck into the bed of the car. The third gen El Camino ended in 1969, yet would trundle on until 1987 before discontinuation. Mega Duty is a shorter truck, lifted off the ground with aggressive headlights and off-road tires. If we had to choose a truck from the era which matches, I'd go with the 2002 Ford Ranger. Both have the same style of headlights. Although Fords are less aggressive in nature, they're eerily, they're pretty much the same shape, and both trucks have the same truck bed and cab configuration. Now that the Dune Rats are done, we're in the home stretch here. Time to finish strong with the final team of Highway 35, the Scorchers. While a Scorchers car can drive through the... The 70 Roadrunner is the first generation of the iconic Plymouth Roadrunner badge name. The iconic front on the 70 Roadrunner we all know and love was only offered for the 1970 model year as the car entered its second generation in the following year, making it quite the collector's item nowadays. Simply put, Quarter Mile Coupe is a modified three-window 32 Ford Coupe based heavily on the concept of hot-rodding older cars from the 1930s in the 1950s rock and roll era of America, with the culture originating in Southern California. Quarter Mile Coupe has all the features of the typical hot rod, with the chopped top, cut fenders, and exposed motor. It's definitely not a car you'd want to send through those boosters, loops, and curves though. Look at that exposed axle. Yikes. Red Baron is based on a real kit car built in the 1960s by legendary hot rod builder Tom Daniels. It was released as a monogram model kit in 1970, eventually becoming its own Hot Wheels car for the Redline era later that year. And even before Hot Wheels World Race, Red Baron had already appeared in a movie, this being the original Toy Story from 1995. The 1957 Ford Thunderbird is the first of the 12 generations of the Ford Thunderbird. The 1957 Thunderbird was the last year of the first generation and had a small facelift to show for it, changing the grille. And this year, Ford definitely leaned into the performance aspect of the Thunderbird, offering a bigger motor to compete with those pesky 57 Chevys. The 57 Thunderbird in the movie and toy line is definitely a favorite of mine. It's a pretty underrated die cast, and I would say definitely pick one of these up if you don't have one, before prices get even more ridiculous. 
the 1999 Dodge Charger RT concept car was produced by the Chrysler Corporation as their attempt to revive the long-gone Dodge Charger nameplate from the 1960s and 70s. An interesting tidbit about this car was that it was powered by natural gases and not normal gasoline. The concept had its plug pulled following the Daimler Chrysler buyout in 2000 and wouldn't be seen again until 2005 when the Dodge Charger eventually did return. In my opinion, it's pretty interesting to look at the 1999 concept versus the 2005 production version of the Dodge Charger. That Daimler Chrysler buyout really had a lot to do with the fate of the Dodge Charger that we ended up getting. The split window on the C2 Corvette, which we see in the movie, was a design only released on the 1963 model of the second generation Corvette, which gave it a more aggressive and stylized looking rear end. However, as soon as it was released with this design, it was gone. It was removed for the 1964 model year, mainly due to complaints about poor vision out of the back windows of the car. However, this split window, only available on the 63 Corvette, makes it a highly desired collector's item among boomers. The Virtual Garage describes it as having Japanese style drifting tires, and you can actually somewhat see this in the movie. If you look at Muscle Tone close up, you can see the tires are a bit wider compared to other 5 spoke cars. And it's just a neat little detail that I like that mainframe went and added. So going off of this presumption of having Japanese drift tires, it's safe to assume this car is based on something of Japanese origin. However, being on the Scorchers team, I would think it has some American basis. So why don't we take the, the more boxy appearance of a Japanese drift car like the Nissan S14 and combine it with something American and new at the time, which was the 1999 Ford Mustang. Put them together, and you know what? Yeah, I'd say that looks somewhat like Muscle Tone. And now that we're done here, and at the end of the video, hoping that you didn't skip all the way to the end, I just wanted to say thank you for watching my video. I really appreciate it. I'm happy to be back on YouTube producing an actual video again with actual effort put in. That's not just a music video or a YouTube poop. And hey, maybe if this video does well, I'd go back and do this again, but for Acceleracers. Sound off below in the comments if that's something you're interested in. And again, smash that like button. It shows me that this sort of content is content you'd like to see made more of. I've been Trub, and this is me, signing off. Thanks for watching, and remember to stay classy.